Hey guys, so I am back with Little Man. We're gonna go over the latest a set of conquest feeds. Yes. And so this conquest is coming up. It's gonna start on Monday. We are working towards unlocking Beskar Gideon, the new uh, Imperial Remnant trooper leader that's coming our way. Um, so that's who we're working towards. And we're, we've got the feeds today. We've got the data disks today. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. However, before we hop into that, as usual, I just want to say thank you so much to my patrons. I really do appreciate your support. It's been a ton of fun interacting with you. Um, and I do really, again, appreciate it. So let's look at the feats as usual. They did come out from CG themselves instead of getting data mined. So they did post this in the forum as well. Um, so you can see it. I'll drop a link below just because it is a little bit easier to view it versus looking at this text here, obviously. But as per usual, I'm going to go through the sectors and the global feats, just some ideas for teams. A lot of this is very similar from what we just saw. A lot of the feats are even like direct copies, um, including like being in the same sector and everything. Uh, so that's kind of promising. Um, and then, like I said, we will go through everything and see how we can get to Red Crate from there. There obviously are going to be a couple of feats that you might want to skip depending on your roster. Uh, if you don't have Galactic Legend Leia, that's going to be an automatic skip in Sector 5, which we'll get into. Um, but like I said, let's have a look at what is going on um, in the game with these feats and what we actually need to do. So let's start with the global section. Um, in the global feats here, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the global feats, uh, a lot of it, like I said, is similar from last time. So defeating at least 250 enemies on the golden challenge path. Um, again, that is the path that runs along the top or the bottom of conquest. The nodes are outlined in gold. It's really straightforward. Uh, winning 40 battles with a full squad of Hut Cartel, win 40 battles with, and this is a very particular squad makeup, um, Princess Nisa, Chief Chirpa, Wicket, Paplu, and Logre surviving, and then win 20 battles with Rex, Chopper, Ezra, Hera, and Kanan surviving. That is a direct copy from last run. Uh, you need to defeat 100 enemies with Tuscan Warrior. So this is a feat that is going to get you a consumable. It's worth one point. You equip the consumable and you get the 15 points for that. So that is going to be available in the Conquest Pass Plus as long with the other uh, consumable deploying cooling systems. <gasps> yes, which is an exact copy from last time. Um, and that's winning 20 battles with a full squad of Wookiees. So you can see at the top, I've got Phoenix surviving and Wookiees already from last run. Again, really uh, straightforward here because direct copies. We know that Phoenix works really well on the Sector 1 Datacron node as well as the Wookiee team. Um, according to the list of discs that have been released from CG, we should see Volatile Accelerator and Amplify Agony again, which also means um, Volatile Voluntary Vanguard is on the list as well. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily trust the list, to be honest with you. There are a lot of things that are questionable in it, including just like what's the rarity of a disc and things like that that have been changed that just it doesn't really make sense. So we'll see if it's accurate. Um, if it is accurate, at least in what's offered, then that is great. Thanks, buddy. Um, so those are the first two there. Hut Cartel is great because you can theoretically make two squads with them. Are you going to want to make two squads with them? I don't know. Uh, you don't necessarily need to have them all survive either. You just need to win 40 times with them. Uh, if you do have Jabba, um, you are probably similar to me and that you use the team fairly regularly just to kind of make your way through the sectors as well. Yes. And it works really nicely. So I think you're going to rack up those 40 wins really quickly um, with them. Now, the Ewok team is one that is interesting. So these are my Ewoks. That, <laughs> these are the ones that are listed that we have to use. Chirpa is going to be your leader. Um, I honestly do think with some mod swapping and discs, this is going to be easy to get done. Uh, so we do need to do this 
We need to win with all five of them surviving 40 times. So it is a little bit uh, tedious in that regard. Um, but I think it will be doable on the sector one data cron node, assuming it stays the same. We don't know that yet. Assuming it's a bad batch node, that bad batch data cron node in sector one is very slow. So if you can get your Ewoks to go first, get the turn meter train rolling, uh, I think this is going to be pretty straightforward in how it works. Uh, again, especially if we've got the uh, Voltaire Vanguard volatile accelerator amplify agony kind of powerhouse discs equipped there we should be good the one that i am a little <laughs> worried about is warrior so we need to get 100 kills with tuscan warrior my tuscan warrior is like gear eight or something ridiculous uh so you could try a full tuscan team which is going to be in a later sector I am kind of thinking maybe it could be doable against like a Geonosian type of squad um, that would theoretically kill themselves off with a Treya lead. Again, not I'm not totally sold on this. It's just my initial kind of thought process. I'm thinking of all tile accelerator and amplify agony combo. Um, having Darth Treya there, having a tank there to kind of take the initial hits. Um, if you can get Jedi Master Luke to go and ability block them so that they're just basicing you. Uh, that would be ideal so your warrior survives. And then I did put Thrawn there just to swap the turn to warrior. I'm hoping if you can get the turn meter swap off, warrior can go in and get a couple of kills. I honestly don't know. <laughs> uh, this is just my initial thought process on it just in general. That being said, it might be doable again against the Sector 1 Datacron node. I'm also thinking maybe against the Sector 2 Datacron node. It is a Mon Mothma squad that with the um, Scare of Rebel Pathfinder, so he's going to revive. So that might be a bit better to control there. Might be doable with a full Tuscan <laughs> team there. Who knows? Um, depending on discs and everything like that. But I think it's something to kind of just keep in the back of your mind. Honestly, this is probably going to be a feat that I would skip just because it sounds like it's going to be tedious. Um, you've got to kill a hundred with your warrior. If your warrior is anything like mine, it's just not going to be fun. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. So let's look at sector one, sector one, pretty straightforward. Um, Winning 14 battles with at least one Jawa surviving, winning 14 battles with a full old Republic squad, gaining potency up 40 times and attempting to inflict stun 100 times. The good news is, is that you can save for the Old Republic team because that has to be a full Old Republic team. Hi, buddy. You can actually double dip on three of these together. Um, so that is fantastic. I do have my typical Bam, Han, and Chewie squad at the top there um, because we do have a couple Jedi, Sith, no aligned force users teams or feats to do as long along with survival feats on the boss and the mini boss. So you've got a Seer Junda survival feat on the mini boss and a Ben Solo survival feat on the boss. So I'm planning to plug them in with this team again if you have not run it before it does require volatile accelerator and amplify agony to um get the turn meter train rolling here and it also does require the zeta on bam's leadership so keep that in mind um so that is for that now full old republic really straightforward i'm definitely going to go ahead with the jedi knight reference squad you are going to be able to work on stun as well with this so that is kind of nice um I put Zalbar there as my fifth. Realistically, it's going to be whoever your strongest fifth Old Republic is. Again, this doesn't say that you need all five to survive. You just need to win 14 times. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. This sector is going to be a little bit annoying just in terms of repetition because you have two win 14 battle feats. The second one is winning with at least one Jawa surviving. Uh, I am planning on double dipping, triple dipping on this one. So I'm going to pair it up with stun and potency up. So you need to attempt to inflict stun 100 times and you also need to gain potency up 40 times. Um, so I am thinking of throwing a Jawa with Ray, 
Ray is really great in this instance because of her damage immunity that kicks in on light side characters. So you can keep that Jawa alive. <gasps> yeah. Um, and then I've got a couple of characters with her that are going to inflict stun. So we've got R2 and Finn there for stun. Kyle Katarn is actually able to do an AOE uh, potency up for your squad. And then I chose to take Jawa for two reasons. One, he's my strongest Jawa. Um, but two, he also has a special ability that gives a chance to inflict stun on non-droid characters. Um, it's a higher chance against droid characters. So if you're going against like a Grievous team, that would be a good opportunity there to double dip as well. So let's say you don't have Ray. Hopefully you have Jedi Master Luke. And then I am just subbing in Watt there to get the taunt, the force taunt going on Jedi Master Luke. This is still going to get you double dipping on Jawa or triple dipping on Jawa's stun and potency up. So you've got obviously your Jawa there surviving. Special ability possibly landing stun. Ayla Secura is there because she has a stun on basic. So I'm just going to call her every single time I can with Jedi Master Luke's um, leadership ability. And then Kyle Katarn uh, is there again for the AOE <laughs> potency up. So that is sector one. Uh, pretty straightforward. So let's, uh, let's look at sector two here. Sector two. Okay, we need to defeat 10 enemies with Saw Guerrera. So this is uh, very straightforward. First of all, I love that it is 10 enemies and that's come down in a number. So that is fantastic. Um, you can go in with your full Rebel Fighter team if you wanted to. I am probably going to use Jedi Master Luke though. You can see that in my second team there um, with Watt to force the taunt. Just keep in mind for your two other characters, which I did leave empty. Um, I am going to fill them. I'm going to take two Jedis just so that we can take turns calling Saw with Jedi Master Luke's leadership ability and getting the kills off with him. Um, again, we only have to do it 10 times, which is really refreshing. The other uh, three feats here, win 14 battles with no support in your squad. Uh, Saw is a support, so you're not going to be doing it with him there. Uh, attempt to inflict burning 60 times and attempt to inflict plague 200 times. Thank you, Jasper, my hair. Um, a lot of the Night Sisters are support characters as well. So you're not really going to double dip too much there, um, especially because you need to inflict plague. You've got Asajj as support, Talzin as support. Like, it's just annoying and it's, it's not going to work well. So just keep that in mind when you're working on your plague feet. Okay. So, um, but let's, let's figure out how we're going to do burning and no support. You can look at a bounty hunter team. Just again, obviously you're going to take no support here, but Django's got an AOE burn. So that is something to keep in mind, um, when you are working on that. And then of course, we've got some other characters here that have burning. Um, so Django, obviously R2 has an AOE burn. Drogon has his burn, um, especially paired with R2. That would work really nicely, I think, in my opinion. Um, and then BT1 does have a burn on his special if the characters are already suffering from target lock. So just keep that in mind. It is a conditional burn, but it is something to uh, help you get it done. Okay, and then again, Plague. So this is 200 times. I'm just going to take the towels and lead because it's going to get you there a little bit faster. Um, and again, just going against the Datacron node, it's probably how I'm going to do this. Um, but if you do go against a team that you can time out against, <laughs> then that would work as well. Okay. And then you have your mini boss and boss. So again, we have those survival feats. So Bam Han Chewy is usually my go-to there on the mini boss. You need Tarful surviving. And then on the boss, you need Saw Guerrera surviving. Yes. Um, on the mini boss, no Jedi, Sith, or unaligned force users in your squad. And then on the boss, only dark side characters. So obviously you need to do that twice um, because Saw is light side. So 
you're going to go ahead with that. I would probably do a hot cartel team on the boss if possible, depending on who the boss is. We don't know that yet. Um, and I would do just all dark side. So take out your Leia, take out your skiff. And then that way you can have a full dark side hut cartel team and double dip towards your global feet at the same time as well. Okay. Uh, sector three. So for sector three, we are going to inflict doubt on enemies 60 times. So that is coming from Afra or Malgus, just those two. And then we need to defeat 10 enemies with Princess Nisa. So, I mean, yay. If you can double dip this on the global team with the full team surviving, I guess that is great. But honestly, because it's only 10, I am most likely going to do um, a Jedi Master Luke team, which I'll show you. Win 14 battles with a full squad of resistance characters. Pretty straightforward. Attempt to inflict stagger 60 times. Again, pretty straightforward. So... There are a couple of things that are directly lifted from last month's conquest. Yes. Uh, stagger being one of them. Doubt isn't a direct li lift. We did have, um, we have returned here instead. So you were using Malgus in general, um, but you're able to copy a lot of those same teams. So if you're going with a full Malgus team, Sith Empire team, you're going to work on Doubt and you're going to work on Stagger at the same time. Doubt coming from his second special and Bastilla Sean Fallen being the character that's going to get you Stagger there. Um, you can also get Stagger with a Kira Smuggler team. Personally, I would just double dip and work on it with Malgus at the same time. Again... For Nisa, I'm planning to do a Jedi Master Luke team. Taking Watt for the taunt, as usual, Nisa, and then two Jedis. Um, just so that, again, I can spam call Nisa with the leadership ability. Have her land the kills. And again, it's only 10 enemies. So that's come down. It's going to be significantly, significantly easier to get done that way. Um, I will say for these 10 enemies, if possible, I'm going to be looking for... Mon Mothma squads uh, that have like a Scarif Rebel Pathfinder that is going to revive when he has a buff um, because that would be great. But I'm not going to go out of my way necessarily to do it because again, it's only 10 enemies. So just keep that in mind. Uh, full resistance squad. You're going to be able to do this a couple of different ways. Um, if you have Galactic Legend Ray, I think you're going to be in a very good spot because you're going to have your resistance completely relict, essentially. Um, if you don't, I would probably do a Jedi Training Ray team, which is what I'm planning on doing on the Professor X account. It will most likely be this exact uh, team comp, to be honest with you. Uh, I find that they work very well against First Order teams, um, and it's really good at being able to control them. So it is going to be doable. You're just going to have to do it 14 times. Okay. And then another stagger and doubt team um, is Palpatine lead with Mara Jade. And then your Sith Empire um, trio here, so to speak. So you're able to get stagger from Mara Jade and Bastille Sean on this team. And you're able to get doubt still with Malgus because again, it's his special, not his leadership. So he can just come along um, and get his special however many times. And you're able to work on it that way. Uh, mini boss, you need to win with Zori Bliss surviving. So if you are able to feel the full resistance team there, I would do that. I would consider taking... Galactic Legend Ray, if you have her, um, because you can get the damage immunity onto Zori. That way she'll be able to survive um, if you do have a weaker one. Otherwise, you could also do a Bam Han Chewy team as usual, and that would double dip for your No Jedi Sith Unaligned Force user's feet as well. Um, and then on the boss, there are two... Um, one might be a write-off for some people, which is winning with Dr. Afra surviving. I don't have Dr. Afra, so I will tell you right now, I'm going to be skipping that feat. Thank you. Uh, the second one is winning with Scout Trooper surviving. So again, uh, depending on the boss, I'm hoping to use Bam Han and Chewie there and just have the Volatile Accelerator, Amplify Agni, Turn Meter Train, Go, and 
make sure we can kill everyone before they essentially take a turn. Again, these are boss feats that I'm hoping once we have our discs set up, it won't be that difficult to get through and just be able to plow through them. If you don't have the right discs right away, I encourage you to just beat the node however you can and then come back to them later on. All right, let's look at sector four. Win 14 battles with a full squad of Tuscans. So this is something that you could theoretically double dip on the global feat that you need to kill 100 enemies with warrior. Again, it's going to depend on what your Tuscans look like. Um, attempt to inflict evasion down 40 times. Attempt to inflict armor shred 20 times. Both of these are, are direct copies from last month. Uh, they were in this exact sector. And then you need to gain repost 40 times. There are only three characters in the entire game that give repost. Uh, Malakos being one of them. Jedi Knight Cal and Count Dooku. Those are the only three. The other downside to repost as well is that it cannot be copied. So you cannot pull any Grandmaster Yoda <laughs> shenanigans of trying to spread that buff around with him, it's not gonna work. It has to come from those three characters. So that being said, Armor Shred, pretty straightforward. You can do like a, a Die Master Kenobi team. Commander Ahsoka has Armor Shred after she does her first four sleep um, with the instant kill. So she does need to get that done first. Thanks buddy. General Skywalker, oh, Skywalker has Armor Shred. Um, Kiati Mundi has armor shred. And then I did just put mace there as a fifth for all intents and purposes. Evasion down. Um, I did a full CLS squad. Chupio is the one that has it on his basic. And because he assists so much, you can actually get this feat done pretty quickly with him. So he's there for that reason. Um, and then I also did an invasion down armor shred team here with Jedi Master Luke. General Skywalker and Cam obviously have armor shred, and then you've got evasion down from old Ben. So if you're calling old Ben with anyone, he's got evasion down on his basic. So thanks buddy. That is something that you can look at doing. Uh, keep in mind, armor shred is also possible from Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. So if you have him, you can uh, double dip there as well. Tuscan's pretty straightforward. You just need your full Tuscan squad. As you can see, mine are pretty sad. And then repost here. Um, so I did put the three characters that have it on their kits. C-3PO does not have it. However, I wanted to put him here to mention uh, an idea I had, which was maybe tagging, having him tag along on the team. If you can get three stacks of translation on your character that does repost, um, then every time C-3PO does his basic, you're going to reduce the, the cooldowns of those characters. So you would theoretically be able to get repost on faster. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to do it, but it is something to keep in mind. Jedi Knight Cal Custis, you have to alternate his abilities in order to have repost take effect. So you're not really going to need C-3PO there if you are planning to use him. And then for one of the boss feats, um, it is the final boss. You need to win with a full squad of Mandalorians and then also win with a full squad of light side units. You can, yes, field a full light side Mandalorian squad. Would I do it and successfully beat the boss? I don't know. It depends on what the boss is, but it can be done. So I would probably try that first. If not, Maul Mandos is most likely going to be able to get it done. No problem. Um, and then on your mini boss, you need to defeat an enemy with Scout Trooper, um, which is worth three. We'll see how, how that goes. Again, Volatile Accelerator and Amplify Agony is going to take effect there. Um, if that is able to get a lot of your damage done before Scout Trooper goes, you should be able to get that enemy defeated with them. And then the other feat on that mini boss is winning without Jedi Sith or Unaligned Force users. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, last sector, we have sector five. You need to defeat 50 enemies with Empire units. So again, very straightforward. 
win at least 20 battles without losing any units. Very straightforward. Gain damage immunity 40 times and attempt to inflict ability block 60 times. So we don't actually have any Inquisitor feats, um, but they are pretty good at double dipping on a lot of these. They are a full Empire squad if you if you have them. They do have ability block, um, which is on 8th Brothers rotating saw special if you have more than three stacks of purge um and fifth brother is able to give himself damage immunity so you can get some feats done that way um you could do a full empire ability block team with a palpatine lead if you wanted to um i did put thrawn there just to kind of keep passing the turns back to vader because he's got ability block on his basic uh, so I would just try to get into Merciless Massacre as many times as possible so that you can just keep basicing and basicing and basicing, taking as many turn turns as possible that way. Um, and then just some other characters to keep in mind for damage immunity. Ray, obviously, if you have a full light side squad, she's going to be able to pass some damage immunity out that way. Droidica. <coughs> let's see. Droidica can go into damage immunity. Um Beskar Mando hands out damage immunity whenever his, al his light side allies fall below a certain health threshold. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, Jedi Master Kenobi is able to hand it out with his special as well. Okay, and then we have another ability block and damage immunity squad. Jedi Master Luke's got ability block on his AoE. Bastille Sean has ability block on her basic. Old Ben has ability block on his basic. And then you've got um, Mace also has ability block on his basic. And damage immunity on Jedi Knight Cal Kestis with one of his specials. So just a couple there that would double dip as well. In terms of boss feats, uh, you're looking at on the mini boss, winning with only dark side characters. And then winning with Tarful surviving. So you are going to have to do that one twice. Yes. And then on the boss, winning with General Leia surviving. General Leia Organa, so Galactic Legend. Um, which if you don't have, then if you're like the majority of us and you don't have her, then you're going to skip that. It's five points gone. And then winning without a Galactic Legend in your squad. So pretty straightforward there for Sector 5. And um, that is basically it in terms of feats for this conquest in terms of what i would skip honestly my initial thought process obviously is leia and afra because i don't have them and then i'm probably going to skip the 100 warrior kills um that's just my initial thought everything else we'll see how it goes and how the discs shake out hopefully this was helpful though and you will be set to go like i said this starts on monday so october 2nd and this is to unlock gideon I will be back next week um, with each sector as we're making our way through. It is a little bit crazy for me next week, so bear with me in terms of timing. But hopefully we should have one sector a day as per usual. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We're going we're gonna to go. We'll see you next week. Say bye.